Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. I think it's some kind of trend now for the last couple of years um, that there are more comics uh, showing their awareness of the rich history of comics. Mm. I could mention the uh, grand design books from Ed Piscor and others and of course um, Copra uh, for an instance by Michael Fifi which has of course uh, these strong connections to Suicide Squad and some other uh, superhero books in, in my opinion. Um, it uses these tropes in and uh, gives them a new dress in these uh, cool um, thoughtful designs and, and panel layouts. It's not the easiest read uh, though uh, and uh, you have to yeah, patience sometimes and, and really pay attention to the way um, the story unfolds here and after reading the first issue from the new uh, series by, published by Image I I recognized uh, I have to read the trades from way back then again to really get the full gist of it. Um, so um, you don't have to do that uh, because here in the back section there are short summaries of each issue that has been published before from uh, of Copra um, and some character sheets of the main protagonists. Yeah, but I, I want to read them in, uh, in, in as comics and yeah, so I'll come back to this one here when I, when I've read all the trades before, which takes, will take some time, I'm uh, pretty sure. Another series in that trope um, is the series All Time Comics, uh, first published by Fantagraphics. And now uh, we have the trade uh, from the first uh, Fantagraphics uh, issues, but now published by Floating World Comics. And quite frankly, I've enjoyed these all-time comics here even more than I've enjoyed Copra. Um, one reason clearly is that I've um, yeah, that it's such an easy read. You can flip through these comics um, with not much thinking, just enjoying the colors and the silly ideas uh, around these um, sort of superheroes, uh, crime destroyer. This is a Jim Ruck cover, by the way. Um, as there is an amazing bunch of talent here involved. And, um, yeah, this here is crime destroyer with the silly uh, rubber fists on his shoulders, like the eagles on the shoulders of Judge Dredd or Bullwhip. Or Bullwhip? Uh, some sort of, yeah, maybe reference to the Zadomaso references in uh, com sometimes in comics. And here, this Captain America guy here is uh, uh, actually Atlas, called Atlas. And uh, talking about amazing talent um, combined on these pages, the story here was penciled by Herb Trimpey or Herb Trimp. Um, who passed away, I guess, 2015. Uh, so this has to be one of his last works. And uh, the inks uh, are by Benjamin Mara, which you can recognize as well. Um, what a combination that is here. Benjamin Mara's minimalistic um, stick figures are great in a way, but sometimes uh, this kind of minimalism is maybe a bit too much and so it really helps if you have some kind of detailed fun art uh, like her Trimps uh, art here uh, that can be maxed up a bit later on with uh, um, inks by Mara. And you can see here a lot of strange tropes are explored in the story. Uh, the the uh, beams that come out of the, the this guy's eyes here and the Kirby crackles and they pull from wherever they can get some stuff. There is even uh, some reference to newer 
uh, comics that are in a bit in the same vein, like Black Mars uh, Space Rider science fiction comic, um, because here's a mandrill uh, somewhere in the story. Um, and Kirby influences all over the place, of course. Uh, but this mandrill monkey made me really think of, uh, yeah, including um, space riders in this, yeah, in this group of comics um, um, pulling from, yeah, this rich treasure uh, box of comics. Look at these panels. And the stories are pretty, e as easily to follow as they are, uh, um, borderlessly silly, of course, and uh, <laughs> man, these colors here are really, really great. Um, okay, I wanted to show you a bit more. Um, Benjamin Mara did most of the art here in this book, um, but there are some other others involved here. This is uh, Benjamin Mara at his Mara is kissed. <laughs> um, these typical faces, these hands that are always too small or a bit awkward, sticking out of the body and proportions are almost never really right. So, um, fans of Marvel Comics, for instance, maybe hate this kind of stuff here. But hey, this is a creature called Colony, um, uh, comprom uh, comprised out of little spiders, some evil monster. And I'm pretty sure this is pulled from some other comic as well that I don't know of. But to read this here in this comic and uh, after all the little spiders are killed, there's a big spider. Um, it's just... It's just the fun that I need sometimes. And here we have um, a little uh, pin-up by Eric Haven, who is some other guy who makes, uh, yeah, fun, I don't want to say, does funny homage to these old comics as well. So, um, another, um, yeah, Josh Bayer and some other dude called Bayer as well, Sam Bayer or, or what it was his name. Um, he wrote um, all this stuff. I don't know. I think the way they, yeah, he is at least the co-writer of uh, all the stories here. And here's the artist. Yeah, there are a lot of artists involved here. And the funny thing is, in this kind of goofy story, it doesn't hurt uh, my reading pleasure too too much. Of course, you can see the um, the breaks in the story when the art suddenly goes even more goofier, like uh, for an instance here, more amateurish, and then uh, amateurish in a good way. Uh, I love it when. There are rough edges uh, followed by pages that are just genuine strokes of, uh, of comic inventiveness, like this page here on the left. So this trade here is highly recommended, as you can guess, even though um, the binding here is a little catastrophe. Um, it's of course a soft cover. What what I uh, what did I expect? Hey, I did expect that they left a bit of, of the white borders or make the white borders on the middle side here a bit wider, so uh, you don't have to pull this book here. Uh, up uh, to some extreme to get uh, the whole uh, the whole panel. Sometimes uh, words are eaten up a bit. Ah, usually you, you can read all the text, but it's 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 a bit um, annoying. But that's just my only one complaint. And if you even if you have to uh, pu uh, push this book here flat. Uh, when you can see some 
colorful fun panels like this one here it's all right with me the last issue in this trade here was done by one artist that in my book maybe will become the next daniel klaus and this is noah wenskyver and this is even an extra long uh, issue so um Noah Van Skyver gives with his more realistic, more cool, um, cooled down art, uh, the story here, a bit of an, a realistic impact, which the other stories, uh, the previous stories, of course, really couldn't achieve with their uh, far out weirdness. And this is here very far out and weird as well, but it started sort of in our world and then uh, explores the strange realms of these uh, this alternative uh, universe that the buyers um, create with their bunch of artists and yeah this story is maybe my favorite even though there are some lengths in the back of it and uh Talking about uh, back or back matter here is uh, a splendid bonus section with uh, pinups here by Johnny Ryan, and this gives you the direction if uh, Johnny Ryan does some bonus art for um, a comic, it can't be a bad comic. A very uh, fun and insightful uh, comic by the writer Josh Beyer. A pin-up, I guess, uh, yeah, by Shaky Kane, another artist uh, that, uh, yeah, that shows you here is quality and, uh, yeah, in more memoriam, an obituary for Herb Trimpey. Man, he had black rings around his eyes. A portrait by Jim Ruck, by the way. Um, yeah, and a lot of other stuff, uh, even art by the writer Josh Beyer, I guess, this year himself. Uh, parodies of on old um, uh, comic ads and art that borders on crazy fan art or is crazy fan art. But I really like it, not to say I love it. Or I <laughs> really love it, actually. Um, so and so on and so on you get really some uh, stuff for your buck since i enjoyed uh, all time comics the soft cover uh, trade here from floating world comics a lot um, in fact i tore through this book uh, in um, in two or three days and usually i read a trade um, maybe a third of a trade and then come back to it a week later or so while reading some other stuff in between. But uh, yeah, this tells you a lot, I think, uh, how easily digestible this uh, book here is and it's just high octane fun. So I uh, ordered um, the singles published by Floating World Comics as well. Unfortunately, I haven't got um, uh, or I missed out on uh, issue one. But this is other than in Copra, where it's really some sort of catastrophe when you um, don't get one issue because uh, the story just builds on each other. Of course, you can uh, skip it and the art is fantastic, fantastic. Uh, but for the story, you always miss something. With all time comics, it's just sheer comic book fun. You can get the story here totally easily it's uh clear uh where are the the evil ones are and and what uh, the good ones want and uh, what's just happening and some surprising stuff is happening out of nowhere but this is just meant to be so and there are references to other books that were never published uh it's just goofing around with all these uh, comic tropes, as I said it. And here's the mandrill that make me uh, made me think of uh, Space Riders. Um, 
One strange thing here uh, were the singles. Maybe you can see it on this double page here. Um, uh, the colors are pretty dark, uh, and just uh, especially in comparison to all-time comics, the the trade, uh, where all the com uh, the colors are really bright and uh, intense. Here the colors are intense as well, but often very, very, very dark. Um, so it makes up for good contrast sometimes. Um, but since the colors are su such an uh, important part of the reading experience of these comics here, uh, that was something I found a bit uh, strange. But uh, as you can see here, the colors are still very good uh, in, in comparison to other comics, of course. And what I really liked uh, here, there are no ads. Uh, it's comics from the first to the last page, uh, some editorial stuff uh, where um, the writers um, are celebrating the immediacy of comics. Uh, I mean, really comics, not digital comics, comics that you have in your hand and can hold. And therefore, I really appreciate this rough, uh, muddy paper. Uh, to call it newsprint would uh, do it a bit dishonor. I think it's really good uh, paper. The right choice, uh, I would say, uh, for this kind of comics. Um, and then we have issue three. It's just more of the same and still different uh, stuff. Here are the colors a bit more um, muted, but for good reasons to tell us the really brain dead um, origin story of one of the uh, yeah villains uh, as it turns out to be here um, this story here was drawn by Josh Simmons I think yeah Josh Simmons and there are, is art by Trevor von Eden as well and this is the most recent uh, issue so far um, issue four of all time comics and I really hope uh, that they'll change uh, the the lettering here, the, the form for the, the title, because this is just a motley crew of lettering uh, and does the uh, crazy stuff inside not really uh, justice. I really think that the, the crude cover painting, I think by Josh Bayer himself, uh, this is some stuff I really like. Uh, and of course, the back cover is as crazy as well. Um, here uh, we have a lady, uh, Julia Fröhrer, um, drawing the stuff with uh, inks by Josh Simmons. And uh, some pages are a bit off. I mean, really off. Uh, not as good as the uh, issues before, but she uh, manages to, um, yeah, step up her game pretty quickly, and we get the goofball fun here uh, that is all all time comics all about pretty quickly. So yeah, I. And even the last page here, yeah, uh, is the maybe the sloppiest last page I've ever seen in a comic for a long time, at least. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, the mix of sloppy, loose, crazy art and uh, sometimes always getting the threads uh, back together to tell us, to be honest with you, a more or less generic uh, superhero tale, but in, in, in such a fun fashion. I really can't do anything else but highly recommend uh, to jump on this train. Um, and even if you don't get all these uh, other stuff here that I'm holding in my hands and will start have to start with uh, issue five, don't worry about it. You will understand everything and uh, have a blast reading all time comics by um, this little but uh, very recommended publisher, Floating World Comics. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.